All right, so what's the goal of this? The overall goal is to determine which reaction occurred, all right? One of them had to happen. Either the top reaction happened where you have copper sulfate and iron zero, and then you end up with iron two sulfate and copper. Or the second reaction where you have uh, three moles of copper sulfate, two moles of iron, and that gives us one mole of iron three sulfate and then three three moles of copper solid. So how do we know which one happened, right? That's the goal of this experiment, right? You're going to use stoichiometric ratios. In the top uh, reaction, the ratio of iron solid to copper solid is one to one, right? And that's what we care about. We want to know how much copper solid is going to be made from that from uh, a specific amount of iron, right? So the ratio is one to one. In the bottom reaction, the ratio of iron solid to copper solid is two to three. So we can use those ratios uh, to determine the amount of mole, uh, the number of moles of copper that's possible. And then once we do the reaction, we can weigh the copper to see which one of those two reactions actually happened. So here's an example. I start out with 0.559 grams of iron. First thing I want to do is convert that into moles, right? Every anytime we're using stoichiometric ratios, we always want to work it with, with moles. So I convert that to moles by dividing it by the molar mass. So it's uh, grams over moles, so 55.9 grams per mole. If I put it in my little table here, I put moles in the top because that's what I want to get. I put grams in the bottom because that's what I want to cancel. Right? So uh when I do that, I have the answer here is 0 0.01 moles of iron, right? That's my that's my starting amount of iron. I know that it's a known value. So then I can use the moles of iron and the stoichiometric ratio of iron to copper to determine the moles of copper that I expect. And I can do that using the first reaction here where the iron and copper are one to one. Right, so the, the mole to mole ratio is one to one. So 0 0.01 times one mole of copper, I put one mole of iron in the bottom because I want those to cancel. And I end up with 0 0.01 moles of copper. If I use the second mole to mole ratio, then, and I want to find out how much copper I'm going to make, I start out with moles of iron. And then I put three moles of copper in the top based on the second reaction where the stoichiometric coefficient for copper is three. And then two moles of iron in the bottom because I want iron to cancel. And I end up with uh, 0 0.015 moles of copper possible. So that you'll see that on the, on the next page. Right. So now. I need to figure out how many grams I got from the reaction. Right. And so this is going to tell me how much I should get. Right. So if I, if, if I use the amounts that I got on the previous slide, then. If the ratio is one to one, then I use 0 0.01 moles of copper and I convert that into grams using the, the uh, atomic mass of copper, right? Or the molar mass, right? So in this case, it's 63.5 grams per mole. So based on the first reaction, if the ratio is one to one, I should get 0.635 grams of copper. If the ratio is two to three, then I know that the uh, two mole, the two moles of uh, iron solid gives me three moles of copper solid, right? So I've already calculated that, and I found out that uh, that's the, the uh, amount of iron that I started with should give me 0 0.015 moles of copper, right? So I can convert that number of moles into grams, which in this case is 0.953 grams of copper. So knowing those two numbers, when I do the experiment and I, I recover the copper, if I get anything 0.635 or less, which because that's possible because the reaction may not go to completion, if I get anything that the, the mass that I recover is a 0.635 or less, I know that I'm dealing with the top reaction where the ratio is one to one. If I get anything, uh, if I if I recover a mass of copper that's 0.953 or less, 
then I know that I, that the ratio is two to three, and I'm dealing with the bottom reaction. So if I if I know the amount of iron, I can use that to determine the amount of copper I should recover, and then based on what I actually recover, I can actually fi figure out which one of those two reactions actually happened, and then I can even figure out the percent yield as well. All right. Um, all right. So what do we learn? We learned that displacement reactions happen when you add a metal to a solution and the metal swap. We also learn about the outcome of redox reactions with respect to displacement reactions. And we did a little bit of a balancing of equations. Uh, we wrote some formulas using the crisscross method. And then we learned about a little bit about the molecular structures of uh, iron sulfate and then iron, iron 2 sulfate and iron 3 sulfate. And we also learned how to determine the number of moles and the mass of copper expected, or that's really the theoretical yield, uh, from the moles and the mass of the um, iron that I started with using the stoichiometric ratio. That's really my key of converting one thing into the other is the stoichiometric ratio. If you have any questions, just reach out to me at the information shown at the end of this video. Thanks.